Hi and welcome to this presentation on chatbots that I've put together for the Indie Author Fringe. I'm Kerry Gardner, owner of the BookBots, which is a book marketing um, site for authors that is fully chatbot based. On the left there you will see BookBot Bob and on the right BookBot Bill. I'm also the creator of several author chatbots and I'm a best-selling self-published author and I've been publishing full-time since mid-2014. I'm thrilled to have been invited to take part in this event, and I hope that by the end of this presentation, you'll have a better understanding of chatbots, what they are, how you can use them, and why you should most definitely have one. There are a lot of misconceptions about chatbots, so please do hang around, and I will do my best to dispel some of those for you. Okay, so let's get started then. Now, in order to see how chatbots can be valuable to you and your business, it is important that you have a good understanding of what they actually are and how they work. So that's what we'll be looking at for the first part of this session. So in this section, we're going to be looking at the different chatbot types, some messenger statistics, and then I'll explain to you why you really don't need to be a tech whiz to have your, ama your own amazing chatbot. So what are the different chatbot types then? Well, for our purposes, they can be split into three main groups. Flow chatbots, AI chatbots, and hybrid chatbots. And we're going to take a look at each briefly in turn. Flow chatbots are the most basic type of chatbot. They are tree-based. And what that means is that users are confined to selecting predefined choices that your bot offers them, usually by way of clicking on a button. There's no option for your user to free type a question and for your bot to respond to that free typed question. So as you can see, this is an example of how a flow chatbot would work. Your user would initially interact with your bot after taking a specific action. And this is where they would come into your sequence. Now, this can be this action can be clicking on a Facebook ad, commenting on a Facebook post, messaging your page, or even clicking on a button on your website. Once your user has taken that action, your bot then asks them a set question to which your user responds by clicking on a button. So up here, for example, your bot might be asked asking them if they are a new or an existing reader. If they click new reader, your bot would then come down here and ask them a, another question. Such as, and this is just an example, what can I help you with today? The user is then offered three more choices. And this is just what I've set for this example. I mean, you can offer them many choices um, and as many variations as you like. But for, for these purposes, there are three choices. One of them, this one could perhaps be learn more about me, in which case they might be taken to a bio page on your website. Another button, say answer B, could be tell me about free books, in which case um, your bot would take your reader to a perma-free book on a platform, um, or Insta freebie, book funnel on your website, or they could click on a third button, <clears throat> excuse me, which could be um, titled sign up or get news, and then the user could be taken to a sign up form. Now, this is the type of bot that I recommend for new users. It's very simple to set up and there is limited scope for errors. The second type of chatbot is an AI chatbot. Now, these are very technologically advanced. They're not um, tree-based, and they respond to user input by taking that user input, running it through a database, understanding the intent, and then they give the user the most appropriate response. Now, as you can imagine, um, this is developer territory. It's very, very... Um, as I say, technologically advanced, and it's unlikely that this is anything that you or I are ever likely to need. 
as I say, the user can completely free type and your bot has to be programmed in a way that can then understand that free type. <coughs> Alexa, Siri, these are all types of AI chatbots, though they are voice activated. The same principles do actually apply. So as explained, an AI chatbot will respond to user input without providing buttons or by asking the user to take a particular action in order to be taken to the next step. A user can simply speak to your bot and by speak, I mean type a question, free type a question. As you can see in this example, your bot here would um, be sat waiting for the user who would then perhaps type something like, tell me about all your free books. And your bot would be programmed in such a way that he would recognize that input and give the appropriate response. Now, this is as close um, to a human-like inter -like interaction that your user will actually get. But as I say, it's far and above anything that you or I will need. Now, the third type of chatbot is a hybrid chatbot, and these are the most common types. They are tree-based in the same way as a flow chatbot is, but they are a combination of flow and AI chatbots. And here, a user will have the opportunity to free type, but within very defined limits. So, for example, the user in this example will arrive at your bot through one of the channels I mentioned earlier and your bot will then ask a question to which the user has a defined response. So a button, so button A or button B. Your bot may then ask the user another question, but one which invites a free type response, such as do you like your paranormal books with vampires or witches? The user then has the opportunity to free type the appropriate response that your bot will then recognize and react to in a predefined way. Now, obviously, the response to a question such as that would be vampires or witches. But your bot would need to be programmed in such a way as to take into account variations on that and spelling mistakes. And that can be a little bit harder to do, which is why I recommend starting with the purely flow-based chatbot to start with and evolving to this one once you're more familiar um, with how the, it all works. Okay, so that's some of the chatbot basics. Um, now, before we go any further, I just want to take a quick look at some messenger statistics. Now, as we all know, a basic rule of marketing is go where the customers are. And we already know this, right? I mean, that's why we pay a fortune in some cases for Facebook ads and Amazon ads, because that's where our customers hang out. But by ignoring Messenger, we're ignoring one of the biggest platforms on the planet. Facebook is pumping millions into developing their Messenger platform. And I think it's important to understand why. Last year, Facebook made it possible for people to use Messenger without having to have a Facebook account, effectively setting up Messenger as a platform in its own right. So whilst you may think that you can reach your customers through the usual ads platform, you can, but you'll be ignoring the people who use it without having a Facebook account. There are currently 1.2 billion Facebook Messenger users. 11% of the world's population use Facebook Messenger monthly. And that's an astonishing number of people. And 64% of Facebook users use Messenger. So I don't know about you, but those kind of numbers excite me. So back to the bots then. So one of the things I hear most often is, but I'm not techie. I have no idea where to start and I really don't want to learn coding. I don't have time. And the good news is you really don't have to. There are two ways of getting your own chatbot. You can either use it as a developer and use code and create your own chatbot, or you can use software. And obviously I would recommend using software. There are quite literally hundreds of companies out there who now offer software that allows you to build your bot with absolutely zero coding knowledge. Some are more simple to use than others. 
and I'm not going to lie, all do take a little bit of getting used to. But once you've mastered the basics, it's really not as terrifying as you might think and it can actually be a huge amount of fun. There are a couple of options that I recommend in terms of um, software providers and I'll tell you about those at the end of the presentation. Suffice it to say though for now that there really is nothing to be scared of. Okay, so that's it for the introduction to chatbots. Next we're going to be taking a look at what chatbots can actually do. Okay, so you're thinking it all sounds very fun and everything and a very cool thing to have. Or you're thinking, no, it's definitely not for me. Whichever one of those camps you fall into, it is important that you understand what chatbots can actually do before you make a decision about whether you should have one or not. So in this section, we're going to take a look at um, what your bot can do for you on Facebook, what it can do for you on your website, and perhaps surprisingly, what it can do for you on printed materials. Before we do though, I just want to quickly revisit an earlier slide as a reminder of what happens at the back end of a bot. So this is an example of one sequence. Now it's important to note though that you can have as many of these sequences attached to your bot as you like, each being different, um, being fed by different sign-up methods or the same sign-up methods but just leading into uh, different sequences. The flexibility of what you can achieve is pretty much limitless. For example, you could have one sequence set up as a standard sequence, a uh, standard welcome sequence, and then you could have another one set up for a special event. Now this could be a pre-order, uh, a book launch, whatever you choose. You could then link that sequence with a particular action so that only those that take that action would then see that sequence. Now, it may sound as clear as mud at the moment, but it really does become much clearer. For example, I have a sequence set up for a pre-order on my next book. It's connected to a Facebook post. When people comment on that post, I take them into a sequence that offers them exclusive members-only content to all those who pre-order my book. That sequence is completely separate to the main sequence I have running on my page. So with that uh, clarification in mind, let's take a look at how people can actually connect with your bot. Now, undoubtedly, the place where you will see the most interaction with your bot is on Facebook, but there are several ways that this can actually happen, and we're going to take a look at those. So the first and perhaps most obvious way for someone to connect with your bot is by clicking on the send message button on your Facebook fan page. Now you already have the ability from within your page settings to set a welcome message for your fans. But by creating your own custom chat bot, you can take this interaction, this welcome message to a whole other level. If you think of the tree sequence I showed you earlier, this is one of the places where a reader, reader can enter into that sequence. Now, if, if you remember, right at the beginning, I mentioned that one of the biggest misconceptions was that chatbots are spammy and that you can go around contacting people willy-nilly at random, whether they asked you to or not. And this is a good place to clear up that misconception. When someone connects to your bot, they are not subscribed until they confirm that they are happy to hear from you in that way. In order to do that, they have to take an action. And this is usually something um, such as clicking on a button. So your first message would be something like, for example, Hi, before we proceed, I just need to confirm that you're happy for me to contact you in this way. Just click on the button below to confirm. If they don't click that button, you can't then contact them and they will not show as a subscriber. Think of it very much like an email opt-in, but very much simpler for your user. Once they've confirmed, they are then taken into your sequence and show on your dashboard as a subscriber. Another way, of course, is a Facebook post. And you may have seen posts like these where someone comments and they get an automated response. 
this is one of the great things that you can do with your chatbot and in fact one of my favorite things with my chatbot even better users no longer have to comment with a specific word unless you want them to so any comment on a post can trigger your chatbot it used to be that they had to comment a particular word and this did cause issues again back to the whole people can't spell thing so how it works is that you create a Facebook page, uh, post on your page and you link it to your bot through your bot's dashboard and you tell it what action you want it to take when someone comments. So an example would be if you created a post that said, would you like a free copy of my first book? Just comment below. Anyone who then comments is taken into the sequence that you have connected to that particular post without forgetting of course the same rule applies and they have to confirm that they're okay with this another way of promoting your bot on Facebook is by running a paid ad with messenger as the destination so rather than being taken to a website or into a lead gen form or Amazon or wherever you usually send your traffic they're kept within Facebook and as soon as they click on your ad, a notification pops up in their messenger inbox. Now, once again, once they confirm they're happy to hear from you in that way, they are taken into whatever sequence you have um, elected to funnel them into. Okay, so although your, live, uh, your bot lives on Facebook, you may not realize, but you can also direct your traffic um, to your Facebook bot by connecting it to your website or your landing page. Now there are several ways of doing this and it's very, very simple. You can either do it by embedding code on your website using an embeddable widget or um, a JavaScript snippet or simply by creating a link, a custom link that you can then attach to a button. All of these options are really simple to set up and again, once a user clicks on that button, they are taken straight into your messenger sequence. Now, you can also, also use your chatbot on your printed materials, which may seem a bit strange when you think your chatbot lives on Facebook. Um, but what you can actually do is you can create a scan code, which can then be printed on your swag. So, for example, you could, if you went to a conference, you could have a scan code printed on bookmarks, um, even on your print-on-demand books that you then hand out. When a user scans that code from within Messenger using a mobile device, that then takes them straight into your Messenger sequence. Um, it's a very cool um, growth tool to actually be able to use. So before we go on to why you should have a chatbot, I think it's important that you see the chatbots in action um, and the growth tools in action. So I'm just going to stop talking now and we're going to go into a screen flow. OK, so I'm going to show you how a couple of the tools work in real life. Um, and this is this is where it's quite fun. I've created a dummy account, Indie Author, very imaginatively named. Now I will show you one um, of the tools on my own um, author page. I can't show you them both, unfortunately, because I've already subscribed. So it won't trigger again for me again using this account. So the first one I'm going to show you then is um, how the Facebook Messenger button works on a author page and to do that I'm going to show you one that I set up on another author's page and um, I'm sure Katie won't mind me showing you the bot that I set up on her author page for her. Okay so this is Katie's McAllister's page and as you can see you have the send message button in the top right hand corner there. So if I just give that a click it will give me a get started button that everybody has to click. So just click on that and there we go. Straight away her chatbot's kicked in. 
So, hi Indy, name's F for Jim, you can call me Jim. So, are you new to Katie's books? And she gives the, uh, the, but the, the blurb there to say that they can unsubscribe any time by saying stop. And then we have the buttons and they won't subscribe or be subscribed until they click on these buttons. Um, so that works really well. So what I'm going to do while I'm here on Katie's bot is I'm going to take you through it to show you what kind of responses have been set up. But to do that, I'm going to go in here and, and make it, um, if I can remember how to do it down here, I'm going to make it bigger so that you can actually see um, more effectively how it actually works. Okay, so this is Katie's first message. So I'm a new reader. So um, let me have a look. I'm I'm new to Katie's books. Yes, I am. Okay, so welcome. So do you want to know more about Katie or the books she writes about? Okay, and others, but the ones about me are the best. So I want to find out about Katie's books. So let's what let's see what rings your chimes. Do you like paranormal books? Well, no, I'm not a fan. Okay, so not a dragon fan, eh? How about fangboys? Do you like vampire books? No, not particularly. Um, okay, so do I like Viking ghost time thieves? Oh, yes, that, now that sounds fun. So I'll click on that, yes. Gotcha covered, babe. Here's a list of Katie's other paranormal books. So then she gives me a list. There's three books here, Time Thief, um, and there's the cover there. And I can read an excerpt. Now, if I click on this read excerpt button, it will actually take me to her website directly to a page where an excerpt of that book and a buy button is listed. But none of those three really float my, float my boat. So I'll click on more books, please. And there's some more Aint Myth Behaving and Ghost of a Chance. Well, I quite like the look of that one. So. Let's see, I'll click on that one and see what happens. So as I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but I'm actually connected to the internet through my cell phone at the moment, which is why it might appear a bit slow. And here we go, we're on her landing page now and we have a very, very nice website actually. We have the book cover, book trailer, podcast, order book, and then we have here the blurb of the book. So that's a great way for somebody who is new to her books can have a look at all of them and then see which one they, they, they fancy really and then click through to the landing page. So it's a great way of funneling readers um, that way rather than just a, a home page on, on Amazon or, or you know a page on your website. It's much more personal than that. Now what you may also notice here is just here down in the left hand corner. Now this is something I haven't mentioned yet, but is a lot of fun and very, very useful. Now I don't know how much Katie has on hers yet, so I'll show that to you on my page. Okay, now this is my marketing um, company page. I click on message there, get started. And welcome Indy, very happy to meet you. I'm Bob, just click below to confirm you want to start receiving free books. So then a user would just click on yes. Great. And then another message comes through. I'm excited about sharing some free books. Entirely up to you whether you choose to grab them. Is this something you're interested in? And you can see all the hands and everything. They sometimes miss the button. So yes, please. Okay. Um, sounds good to me. And then what happens on my <clears throat> marketing site is they can go through and choose whichever books and whichever genres they want to subscribe to. But the reason I brought you here is to show you the menu in the bottom left hand corner here. Now this appears as three horizontal lines on a desktop but it actually appears full size on um, a mobile device. So if I click on that then I Easy button, unsubscribe. Make it very, very easy for the reader. Help and about book bot Bob. So if I click on help, I can tell the reader how to add more genres, remove genres, how they use it, ask them to join the Facebook reader group. So if you imagine you have this on your Facebook fan page, you could have a place in your menu for people to join your reader group or your ARC group. 
So that is a fantastic way of getting people. And I've had a lot of people come into the reader group through um, using this button. And you can also, what else do I have on there about Book Bob, Bob? How does it work? Where the books come from? Can they choose a title? Privacy, because that's very important, of course. And people may want to know what do you do with their information once they connect to your bot on Messenger. Now, I haven't mentioned this, and I probably should. The only information you receive about your readers when they connect to your Messenger bot is their name and their location. You don't have access to their page. You don't have access to any personal information. You don't have access to their email or anything else. Um, and in fact, here we go. I'll tell you what my bot says to them. If you have any privacy concerns, you don't need to worry. I receive no information about you other than your Facebook name and what time zone you're in. If your Facebook account is in the name of Mickey Mouse, that's as much as I know about you. I don't have access to any personal information. My birthday's on 1st of June, though, just in case you want to send me a birthday message. Um, and, and that's true. You get nothing. So it's always worth having that privacy tab on there in case people are concerned. And as you can see, I've set it up where people can click. Well, I'd rather actually get emails than hear from you through Messenger. And they just click on this button and then that takes them to a sign up form. And they just pop their email address in there. Um, so as you can see, that works really, really well. OK, so now I've had to switch accounts um, because it only ever works once for that person. So let me try. This is a post that I've just created and I've connected to a comment growth tool. So when I comment on this post, it should trigger something to pop up into my inbox. There we go straight away. Let's have a look and see what it says. Here we go. Just need to confirm you're happy to hear from me and get free books. So, yes, I'm happy. There's no button this time. And then it takes them straight into the sequence. So you can see how that works. Anybody that now comments on that post will get taken into that sequence where they will then be able to make the choices that are appropriate for them. Okay, now I won't be able to show you the um messenger tool on the facebook ads because that would actually involve me going into my ads manager and creating an ad and that to be honest is is would take up all my time i don't have that much time to actually talk to you about this but there is a good example of that in my training and i'll give you a link to that um, at the end of this session what i will show you though is how the buttons actually work on a website so if i go to bookbotbob.com which is the website associated with with this page this is what a reader will get when they land on the website and you've got bookbot bill and bookbot bob so how does it work really simple you choose whether you want free or discounted books by clicking on the button okay so these buttons are buttons that i have linked through the back end with my chatbot so if somebody clicks on either one of those links they won't be taken to a landing page they'll actually be taken into my chatbot and i'll show you how that works so i'm a new customer and i want to sign up to receive discounted books um sorry that takes it to this page which and this one is then linked so if i click on hi bill as you can see that's um thinking about it here we go, and straight away I'm in Messenger. These, I mean, I've been in there before, which is why you can see all these previous messages for testing. And then we get a nice picture of Bill. Welcome, AJ. So you'd like to receive some great discounted books. Fantastic. I'll ask you a couple of questions just to make sure you're getting only the books you're interested in. Now, the reader doesn't have to do anything at that point. They will then get taken into the sequence and they can choose their books. Now, you're probably wondering why you didn't see an opt-in message here. And that is purely because I've been through the sequence before um, on that page with that um, Facebook account. 
if somebody comes to it brand spanking new, they will have to confirm that they're happy to hear from the page in that way. Um, so you can see how cool that is and how effective um, that is. And let's say if I go over to Bob, the same thing here, I would click on Hi Bob, and that would take me into the messenger that is actually connected um, to a different sequence. Okay, so I hope that's been interesting, seeing how they actually work in the wild, as it were. And um, I will speak to you in a moment. Okay, so we've taken a look at the various kinds of chatbots, so you now understand what a chatbot is. And we've had a look at how they actually work. So the next obvious question is, why should you have one? And there really are several reasons why you should. Now, the first one is your time. Now, I don't know about you, but I never have enough hours in the day and my bot does save me a lot of time and it can do the same for you. Now, I don't know how much time you spend doing admin jobs and OK, I'm not saying that a chatbot can get rid of all your admin jobs. It can't, but it can help with some. I get messages from readers all the time asking me things like, in what order should your books be read? Do I have a new release coming soon? How do I join your reader group? That kind of thing. Now, answering those questions takes time. Now, you may have a VA that does that for you, but wouldn't it be great if some of that was taken care of? With good use of the menu and by setting up various sequences, you can answer an awful lot of your reader questions by using your bot. You can give them all the information that they would need, almost all the information they need, without having to manually respond to messages. And that obviously frees up a lot of your time. And second point is improved reader experience. Now, at the end of the day, whether you're traditionally published or indie published, publishing is a business. And as such, providing great customer service is an absolute necessity. Having a chatbot will allow your customers to find the information they need at the click of a button 24 seven. And if you make it a fun experience for them, even better, you'll get a lot of customer loyalty. The biggest plus though, is that the reader doesn't have to sign up for an email list. Over the past 12 months, there's been a huge trend of multi-author box sets and multi-author promos offering free books in exchange for an email address. Um, readers, though, have been swamped with emails from authors. Now, don't get me wrong, the list is still king and I don't think that's ever going to change. But the feedback that I'm getting consistently um, from readers and subscribers is that they are becoming more resistant to giving out their emails as a result. And they love the fact that they can stay in touch in this way with no email sign up. And of course, the third and arguably the most important point is improved reach. Not only are readers becoming more resistant to giving out their email address, but it's getting harder and harder to stand out amongst the noise of an inbox flooded with author emails. You could have an email list of 30,000, but if you're only reaching a small percentage of them and an even smaller percentage is then opening them, it really is time to think of whether there's another way of reaching them. Now, the book bots have um, open rates between 80 and 90 percent and authors who've created their own bots are getting similar, if not better results. And not only that, but the click through rates are over 10 times the industry average for emails. So let's put that in perspective. You have an email list of 10,000 and a chatbot subscriber list of 10,000. If you sent out an email and a broadcast to, to your subscribers, even with a great list, it's unlikely that you're going to get more than a 50% open rate for your emails. Now, obviously, there are those that will, but in most, in fact, will probably be much less. For the chatbot, you will conservatively get 80% open rates. So, thus far, we have reached 5,000 on our email list and 8,000 on our chatbot list. 
of those 5,000, 10% of your email subscribers will click through. And I think that's being generous. So say around 250. On your chatbot, based on my own experience, you will get a minimum of 40% click through rate. So that's 3,200. So on the one hand, you're reaching 250 um, clicks on your email list and on the other 3,200 on your chatbot subscriber base. And on top of all that, the reader is happy because they don't have to sign up to yet another email list. Now, I don't want you just to take my word for that, though. So I'm going to show you a very brief case study next. Now, Andrea was one of the first people to take my bot training and set up her own author bot. She's taken it and run with it. And I'm just going to go through now some questions and answers that we've put together um, for the purposes of this training. OK, so I sent Andrea a list of five questions and here I'm publishing those questions along with her complete and unedited answers. So the first question I asked was what prompted you to take the training and set up your own chatbot? And Andrea answered, I heard about bots from Nick Stevenson and immediately loved the idea. I delete a lot of emails from my inbox without opening them, but I always open Facebook messages. I wanted in on that. And that's true. If you think of that yourself, if you have a, a notification pop up in your Facebook, then the chances are that you're going to open it and not ignore it. And considering how much time people spend on Facebook, it is a great way of actually reaching people. So the second question I asked was, what was your biggest concern about having a chatbot? And Andrea's answer was, my biggest concern with creating a bot was the technical prowess involved. I tried using Facebook Developer to set one up, but couldn't even get through the per first page of instructions. I didn't understand most of what was said. After that, I put it down to something I wouldn't be able to do. Then I ran across BookBot Bob, went through the videos, started with ManyChat and haven't looked back since. And I think that's a common theme and that's something that's holding a lot of people back is that fear of the unknown and the idea that you have to actually be some kind of uh, developing whiz to be able to set a bot up for yourself. But as I explained, it's perfectly feasible and achievable for most people. Question three, how are your subscribers responding to being contacted through Messenger and how does it compare to your mailing list? Now, this is a big question that I think most of you will appreciate an honest answer about. And this is Andrea's. My bot subscribers seem to really love this form of communication. My open rates are almost 100 percent, 100 percent. And my click rates are over 70 percent. Anyone with an email list knows just how amazing those numbers are. There's a connection between my subscribers and me that I don't have with an email. I get more than more from the 300 subs I have on Messenger than I do from the 14,000 subs I have on my email list. A lot more. And again, this is what I was saying to you um, when we went through that example with the 10,000 email list and 10,000 subscribers. You need fewer subscribers to achieve far more than you would with a, an email list where you're just quite honestly not reaching a lot of your subscribers. So the next question was, would you recommend doing the training first? Andrea says, I would totally recommend going through the training first. Setting up a bot can be confusing because there are so many variables. The video training sets everything out step by step in an easy to understand language. Within an hour of taking the course, I had a fully functioning bot already collecting new subscribers. And that's great to hear. And the last question, do you think bots can make a difference to author marketing efforts? And Andrea says, I think Facebook bots are the next big thing for authors. The one thing we all want are readers who feel connected to us, read our messages to them and click on the links click on our links. Facebook bots give us that in a way nothing else does. And this is absolutely true. And I've seen it time and time again. 
Um, and hopefully you will take the plunge and you will see exactly the same results. So as promised, these are my software recommendations. As I mentioned previously, there are hundreds of chatbot software providers, but for me, there are two that stand above the others and they are ManyChat and ChatFuel. I advise that you check them both out, but my recommendation is ManyChat. It's an easier platform to use from a user point of view. And at the time of recording, ChatFuel doesn't have an option to remove their branding, which is annoying. Both have Zapier integration, though it is um, admittedly more limited on ManyChat. But crucially for me, you can see your messenger conversations within your ManyChat dashboard, which you can't do in ChatFuel. Ultimately, though, it's going to be down to personal choice. Just remember, um, though, that if you put a lot of effort into creating a bot in one and then change your mind, you'll have to do it all over again if you want to switch. So do your research and make sure you're happy with the one that you have chosen. Now, if you'd like to get stuck in and start setting up on your own, my training will get you up and running in a matter of hours. It's a one-time cost that gives you lifetime access and the content will be constantly updated. For the Indie Author Fringe attendees, there is a special coupon code that gives you 50% off. Now, alternatively, if you already have or are planning on taking Mark Dawson's Ad for Authors course from the self-publishing formula, I believe it opens again in November, I'll be providing chatbot training within that. I really hope you've enjoyed the presentation and I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Just email me. Um, I believe the email is provided, but if not, it's support at bookbotbob.com. And don't forget to check out the bookbots for your next promotion. Enjoy the fringe.